Welcome everyone. In this talk, I'll be talking about a technique for registering 3D point clouds of plants which have been acquired over a period of time. The motivation for this work comes from the field of plant science, where scientists typically measure some kind of plant traits, this could be say leaf lengths, stem lengths, leaf areas, etc., and track them over a period of time to understand how the plant is growing. However, this is typically quite a manual and a time-consuming process. And the goal of our work in this, uh, in this paper is to come up with a registration technique that would enable later on to automate this process. So the problem here is of registering the point clouds which have been acquired at different times. And as we can see in the image here, uh, we show three point clouds of a tomato plant which have been taken roughly five days apart from each other. And visually seeing, we see that there's a large change or a huge change in the appearance of these plants itself. So in addition to the growth of the plants, the topology of the plant itself changes over time. And this makes the registration problem even more challenging. On top of all this, we also see a kind of non-rigid deformation in the plants as they were acquired at different uh, points of time where they may be affected by some external factors. So one of the ideas that we uh, exploit in this work is to use the skeleton structure of the point cloud. The skeleton in a compact manner captures the overall topology and the shape of the point cloud. In this work, we uh, compute the skeleton, we extract it from the point cloud by using the method proposed by Huang et al. So the first step of our registration process involves the skeleton matching step. So what we do is to take the two point clouds that we want to register and compute the corresponding skeletons S1 and S2 shown, shown here. And then the question becomes which nodes in S1 match with which nodes in S2. Uh, in this work, we formulate the correspondence estimation problem as an inference over a hidden Markov model. The hidden variables of the model or the unknowns of the model are essentially the correspondences between S1 and S2. As is typical with an HMM, we first define a cost, an emission cost, for each, uh, of each such uh, possible correspondence. And so this cost co co consists of two parts. One is a difference in the degree of these nodes. So for example, the degree of the node Ni on S1 is three as it has three edges connected to it. And the second term is the difference in the Euclidean position of these nodes. So the idea is to, uh, is to choose that correspondence which lowers the emission costs uh, by, lower, by choosing those nodes which have similar degree as well as which are near in the Euclidean space. Second, we uh, propose a transition cost or we, uh, we define a transition cost which depends on three, uh, three terms. So the transition cost is defined for a pair of correspondences here shown by Cij and Ckh. So for this pair, uh, one of the costs that we compute, the first one, is the skeletal distance or the distance along the skeleton between these two nodes. This kind of gives us a measure of how close or how similar these nodes are distributed along the two corresponding skeletons. The second cost we, uh, we compute here depends on the number of branches as one goes from node Ni to Nk and similarly from Nj to Nh on S2. So the idea is to check if the topology on the way from these two nodes, which are connected by the correspondences, do they correspond or not. And finally, we have a penalty term, which penalizes if the, if the correspondences connect nodes, which, uh, which allow for a crisscrossing of these correspondences. So we would like to have correspondences which are roughly oriented in the same direction. So once we define these costs, we then put them in a HMM model by computing these costs for all pairs of uh, correspondences. And then the, uh, the optimal set of correspondence that we want is obtained as an inference on this HMM. Here, the answer of the in inference problem is illustrated in the red lines on the HMM diagram. Uh, in our work, we use the standard Viterbi algorithm to perform the inference. And the output is basically the correspondences between the skeleton S1 and S2, which are shown by the yellow lines here. Now we move to the second step of our process, where we now use this, uh, the correspondences that we have in order to estimate a deformation between the source skeleton S1 here into the target skeleton S2 here. Right? The way we do this is to assign with each node of the skeleton S1 an affine transformation. 
We choose an affine transformation because it has the ability to track shearing and scaling along with the uh, rotation and translation components. So basically we attach one such affine transformation to each of our node. Then the question of estimating the deformation becomes an optimization problem where we solve for these affine parameters for each node uh, by minimizing a certain energy. The first part of that energy is given by the correspondence error. This error basically, basically captures the distance between the nodes of S1 and S2 after they have been up, uh, applied through the uh, affine transformation. So basically we want such an affine transformation which brings corresponding points on the two skeletons as close as possible. The second energy is a rotational energy which tries to ensure that the rotational component of our affine transformation is as close to a true rotation as possible. Uh, this is necessary because this leads to a more naturally looking deformation between the skeletons as well as keeps the shearing effects in check. Finally, we have a regularization term which ensures that the, uh, that the affine transformations or the affine parameters for the nodes which are nearby on the skeleton are similar. This also results in a smooth deformation between the skeleton S1 and S2. Now that we have defined all these energies, we solve the minimization problem as a non-linear least squares problem and we employ the standard Gauss-Newton algorithm to solve this problem. So the solution is the set of affine transformations which map uh, the skeleton S1 onto S2. We also use the Cauchy's robust kernel for the correspondence terms. Uh, this is done so that in case there are some wrong correspondences coming from the skeleton matching step, it doesn't completely uh, diverge our solution for the deformation estimation step. Now that we have estimated the deformation parameters for the skeletal nodes, we now transfer it to the entire point cloud. The way we do this is to pick up a point in the source point cloud and project it onto the skeleton. Then this point is projected onto the target point cloud as a linear combination of the affine transformations that are attached to the k nearest nodes on the skeleton. This results in the following pink point cloud, which is now shown overlaid on the target uh, point cloud uh, P2. We also check our results on a more challenging data set by, uh, by registering two point clouds which are temporarily separated even more. So here in this case we take two point clouds which are separated by four days and then perform our registration process. As we can see in the center we are able to reliably find the correspondences joining the two skeletons and then estimate the corresponding deformation parameters. Finally, we also apply the whole deformation to the source point cloud and plot it onto the target point cloud here. So in order to, uh, now that we have our registration results, uh, we can demonstrate an application uh, of this by uh, mo continuously monitoring the growth of the plant. What we do here is to take the data of the uh, uh, data over two weeks and then we do the registration on consecutive days. What we see here in terms of the green lines are that we're able to track the growth of the leaf. So here the green lines represent the length of the leaves. Since we have the registration results, we're able to track them continuously over time. Also, we are able to detect some interesting events such as the emergence of new leaves. So the numbers you see in the box here are the number of new leaves that have emerged on those particular days. Finally, uh, we are also able to interpolate in between the actual measurements that we have taken. So in this animation, the pink point cloud represents the interpolated point cloud in between the blue and the green one, blue being the source point cloud and green being the target point cloud. As we can see, as the target point cloud comes close to our interpolated one, it deforms into the target point cloud. And as we would see now, that if the deformation is quite high, we are still able to smoothly deform into this target point cloud. Finally, to summarize this work, I introduced a technique for registering 3D point clouds for plants over time. And this exploits the skeleton, uh, skeleton structure to estimate the deformation and then use this deformation to, uh, to, uh, to register the complete point cloud. This registration also allows some kind of automated phenotypic application where we can track the growth of the plant or detect certain events such as when new leaves have emerged. And finally, we are able to interpolate the point clouds at time instances in between the actual measurements, which could be used either for visualization or for prediction purposes. With this, I thank you for your attention.